I've done two parachute jumps in my time, both for charity. And uh, the first time was so exhilarating, I decided I'd go back a second time. And the second time, well, the parachute didn't open. And a couple of things struck me from that experience. Number one, by the way, uh, tongue in cheek, I reckon skydiving as a sport is a missed opportunity for some of the nappy brands to sponsor. I'll just leave that there. Let you think about that one, right? Uh, but the second thing, the real, the real lessons that struck me were uh, around life itself. And two things came to mind in particular. <laughs> Welcome to another copy of Column and thank you for joining me. This week I want to talk to you about the time my parachute didn't open. Let me just take you through the fundamentals of skydiving, if I may, for those who haven't yet done it. Um, number one, when you're preparing for a skydive, you're, um, it's when you're starting out, as I was, it's a tandem skydive. So you're effectively welded, strapped to a professional skydiver. Okay, So I was a passenger, effectively. And uh, I was strapped to a professional skydiver. And what happens when you're two miles up, 10,000 feet, by the way, is two miles up. Uh, what happens is you slide the door open on the side of the airplane, right? And you sort of bum your way forward to the opening and you sit there with your legs dangling out into space. So I'm going to invite you to uh, imagine you're sitting, instead of sitting on your chair, that you're sitting at the side of an airplane with the door open. Okay, so sit up straight, please. Cross your arms across your chest. Your right hand is touching your left shoulder. Your left hand is touching your right shoulder. And lift your legs off the floor and tuck them in under the seat that you're sitting on. So if you imagine your feet are now under the fuselage of the plane, okay? And uh, what your professional skydiver strapped to your back is going to invite you to do, he's going to, he or she is going to invite you to tilt your head back. So tilt your head back and look up at the ceiling arms crossed, legs tucked under the chair, and then rock backwards and rock forwards and rock backwards and rock forwards and rock backwards and rock forwards. And on the third rock forward, you're going to exit the plane two miles up. And what's going to happen is you're going to plummet towards the earth. You're going to plummet towards the earth and you're wearing goggles so you're able to see everything that's going on. And you uh, hit a speed called, I hate this term, terminal velocity within a handful of seconds. Terminal, wrong word altogether, terminal velocity. And uh, you go whoosh, whoosh, you can't hear a thing because of the air rushing into your ears, right? And it's so exhilarating. And you fall at terminal velocity for I think about 30 seconds if I'm not mistaken. And then all of a sudden the professional skydiver will pull a, a cable, a lever, a handle, and you your canopy will open above you and you get jerked back up into an upright position because you have been falling horizontal face down um, at, as I say, terminal velocity. You get jerked back into an upright position and all of a sudden it's quite incredible because the whoosh goes out of your ears and all of a sudden it's perfectly calm, perfectly quiet, perfectly beautiful. And you get a chance you can talk exactly like I'm talking to you, to the um, professional uh, strapped to your back. And it's just a wonderful experience. And that's why when I did the first one, I decided I'd go back the second time round. Second time round, we went up in the plane. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes to circle up to two miles up above the airfield. Uh, we're back to the side of the plane again. So again, please, arms crossed, um, you know, uh, your feet tucked under your chair. Look up the ceiling, rock backwards, rock forwards, rock backwards, rock forwards, rock backwards, rock forwards, and you're out of the plane, hurtling towards the earth at uh, terminal velocity. And so the 30 seconds this time seemed a little bit longer only because it was, right? Because we kept falling further and, uh, and um, longer than we had intended. And after what seemed like an eternity, all of a sudden there was a jerking backwards. And in this particular case, we slowed down. We didn't come to a, a, an immediate stop. We just slowed down. And um, next thing I see some, some wires, some cables dangling in front of my face. And I'm thinking that doesn't really feel right. I don't remember that the last time. So something had gone wrong, something had gone wrong. Next thing he hands, his hand comes over my shoulder with a bunch of cables and said, would you mind holding on to those, please? And I'm thinking, Grant, you just tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. So I get to hang, he hands me a bunch of cables. There's some jiggery pokery going on behind me. And next thing, you know, I feel, I feel like a lightness where he has cut something away. And I see what looks like a backpack or a knapsack falling away from us towards earth. Anyway, um, so what had happened was the parachute had failed. He, he did what he was supposed to do. He pulled the correct lever, the correct handle, 
and the parachute didn't open. So after a period of time, he did whatever he was supposed to do for a handful of seconds, because we're talking seconds. And then he decided, okay, this isn't going to work. And he went to plan B. He went to the backup parachute. And thank goodness we had a plan B. Thank goodness he had a backup parachute. The original canopy, by the way, is one of those, um, it's sort of a, a, a rectangular piece of cloth. I'm sure you know the type of thing. And the reason it's rectangular is it allows for all those sort of acrobatic type things going on. You can spin around and do all sorts of twirls and whatnot, which is part of the fun of the first skydive and brought me back. But because we'd lost that parachute, we were left with a backup parachute, which is really only designed to get you down in one piece, right? So we came down uh, faster than we would normally have come down, but no, but nowhere near terminal velocity. And we didn't do any fancy tricks. It was just, let's get on the ground and everything's gonna be fine. And we got on the ground, everything was fine. And a couple of things struck me from that experience. Number one, by the way, uh, tongue in cheek, I reckon skydiving as a sport is a missed opportunity for some of the nappy brands to sponsor. I'll just leave that there, let you think about that one, right? Uh, but the second thing, the real, the real lessons that struck me were uh, around life itself. And two things came to mind in particular. Number one, surround yourself with professionals. Number one, surround yourself with professionals. If I hadn't had that professional strapped to my back, I w we wouldn't be having this chat today, for sure. So number one, whatever area of your life you want to stay safe in, get better in, surround yourselves with professionals. Find a coach in an area that you want to develop and work with that coach. That's number one, surround yourself with professionals. And number two, always have a plan B. <laughs> always have a plan B, okay? What happens if your plan A, whatever it is your plan A is today, what happens if that fails? I'm, I'm not wishing for you that it will, but what happens if plan A, whatever it is you're working on, uh, not necessarily just in your career, you know, plan A in your life, in every, any aspect of your life around your health or your wealth or your relationships or indeed your spirit. What happens if plan A fails? Do you have a plan B? Know that if the brown material collides with the electronic air rotation device in your life, that you can in fact uh, be safe because you've got a plan B. And plan B won't be as effective as plan A. Plan B will allow you survive. Plan B is akin to that horrible little wheel that you have if you get a puncture on the road, you know, the, the one that will just get you to the next, the next uh, station. That's what plan B is. So whatever area of your life that you're working on at this moment in time that you believe to be somewhat vulnerable, whether it's health, wealth, relationships or spirit, well then I recommend that you in fact find a professional to work with and, and help you in that area. And secondly, I recommend that you have a plan B, have some way of surviving should things go awry. Anyway, I'm alive to tell the tale and that's wonderful. So look, thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Column. I hope and trust as ever you got something from it. Please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for this next week. And then very importantly, come back next week and we share another coffee together and I'll ruminate on some other aspect of life and business. Between now and then, get some great coffee for sure. Get some fresh air, get some R and R. If you spend too much time alone, I recommend you go meet some people. And if you spend too much time with people, I recommend you spend some time alone and get to know yourself a little. And then when the time is right, and only when the time is right, get your head back in the game, get organized for the week ahead, get stuck in, make next week count. And I'll see you here this time next week for another Coffee with Colin. Slot. Oh, I love great coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.